On today's Locked on Jayhawks, minutes projection, lineup projection, starting lineup projection, who's going to be part of the rotation projection, all that on the KU basketball team as maybe KU's done 11 scholarships, maybe not, but we're going to give you that projection, what we're thinking right now on this edition of Locked on Jayhawks. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You can hear me as well Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks here your first listen every day. Thank you to all the everydayers out there listening to all the shows. And on today's edition of Locked on Jayhawks, which you can find anywhere you get any of your podcasts, or you can find us on our YouTube page or you can like and subscribe to the show. We're talking KU basketball minute projections, lineup projections, rotation projections, however you want to say it. We're going to give our projections for what we think it'll be for the upcoming season. You can let us know who you think is too high, who you think is too low. We're going to start at the guard position, then we're going to move to the wings, forward types, then we'll finish off with the centers. So let's start with the guards. Uh, First things first, who do you have on the roster? Well, uh, as far as who I'm considering here, Dewan Harris, he's more of a point guard type. Arterio Morris can play the one or the two. Nick Timberlake, you're going to see him at the two and the three. Marco Jackson, uh, I think you'll see him at the one, two, and even three. He's not really a three, but... Uh, like we saw last year, certain lineups where Dewan Harris was playing next to Bobby Pettiford and Joe Yesifu, right? So it'd be the same idea with El Marco's basically your three because he does have the length, athleticism, and, and long wingspan and stuff. Um, all four of those guys will play. Jamari McDowell, do we want to consider him a wing or do we want to consider him a guard for the purposes of this? I'm going to consider him a wing. So we're just going to stick with. Those four players, Dewan, Arterio, Nick, and El Marco, as part of this. I'm not going to talk about the walk-ons. We could. Will Michael Jankovic, his three-point shooting, give him uh, some small role on the team. Will, you know, we're not going to get into that. Okay, so um, who will start? Dewan Harris, you feel certain, will start. He will be the starting point guard for KU, and he will play a lot of minutes. Obviously, he's a veteran, returning player. I don't really need to explain why he's going to start. It's just going to happen. Okay, and then you have a competition for who is going to start. Part of this depends on what the KU starting lineup will look like. Will Kevin McCuller be at the three with KJ Adams at the four? Or will eventually KU play a lineup where Kevin McCuller is playing the four and now you have an opening at the two and the three? That would make it so that two of these guys would start. But I think at the beginning of the season... I'm expecting KJ, Bill Self, going to go with the guys he trusts to start at the four, Kevin at three, which means you only have one other starting spot, if Dewan's getting one of the guard spots, for one of these other guards. That means whoever wins the competition between Arterio Morris, Nick Timberlake, and Elmarco Jackson gets that spot. Now, in the case of Arterio Morris, um, he might be the best overall player, right? He's a year older than Elmarco Jackson, comes in with similar recruiting rankings. He was actually a little bit higher. Um, and maybe the best combination of shooting and defense and ball handling there, but also with Arterio, you're coming into a new system. I guess all these guys are, uh, but you know, with Arterio, uh, it's the idea that you missed some of the practice time, uh, for, for going out. I, I, I don't know. He wasn't there for one of the scrimmages. I would just assume that has something to do with the, the case that he's undergoing. I believe because of that case, he will be missing the trip down to, uh, Puerto Rico, for KU, so he won't be playing in those games. Uh, Like You you add it up in in a competition where everybody's trying to get to know the system and in a new system, the guy who's not going to be there as much and and not able to, I don't know, ease along with that, you wonder how that affect him in in that regard. And Marco Jackson might be the best athlete of the group. Um, He's also a freshman, so we'll see how that goes. But, you know, he has a very high ceiling, so it wouldn't shock you. And then with Nick Timberlake, he provides probably your best option as a floor spacer. With Kevin McCuller, inconsistent three-point shooting. K.J. Adams, TBD on what that's going to look like, but I think we can assume it's not going to be a a great three-point shooting option. Hunter Dickinson, good three-point shooter, but as a center, you know, he's getting up less than two per game last year. Even if that went up to like a number like three this year, that's still not a ton. Dewan Harris, not like a great, uh, you know, three-point shooter off movement. He's a really good three-point shooter on standstill attempts and on like spot-up attempts, Um, but how many is Dewan going to take, right? Is he going to take three a game? You know, 
Um, so you need somebody else to space the floor and hit threes. Now, Ontario Morris, I do think it has been overlooked how good of a three-point shooter he can be. Um, we're going to have an episode later down the road about does KU have enough from a three-point shooting lens? And I was actually surprised when I was looking into it. I mean, Ontario shot like two and a half a game in like 11 minutes, which overall the sample size is not a ton of threes that he took on the season because he was playing 11 minutes per game behind all those experienced guards. But when you think about it, like taking like two, two and a half threes per game in 11 minutes, that means if you're playing, you know, 30 minutes, you're going to get up like six or seven threes in a game. If you're playing mid 20 minutes, you might get up four or five threes in a specific game. So I do think he actually is a really good three-point shooter. And if he ends up being dangerously close to Nick Timberlake, you get more ball handling. You probably get more athleticism and defense with Morris out there. So I wouldn't rule him out to start at the two. But as of right now, I'm going to go with Nick Timberlake to win that battle between those three. Again, wouldn't shock me one way or another. Um, and also with how much Bill Self does love the guys he can trust and play defense. Like what if Morris is just that much better of a defender than Timberlake? And even if Timberlake's a 40% three-point shooter, if Morris is 35%, Bill Self's like, I'm, I'm comfortable taking that just because I want to go with the guy I can trust on the defense end. But I do think because of the floor spacing questions, I'm going to go with Nick Timberlake starting at the two as of right now before we get into you know more practices and, and hear more opportunities about what's going on. Now, as far as who will play from this group, all four of these players, Harris, Morris, Timberlake, Jackson, all going to play, all going to be a part of the rotation. Feel very confident in that. Obviously, you don't know what happens with injuries and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that's that's always the caveat, but that's kind of the unspoken thing I don't really need to talk about. Um, who has an uphill battle for more playing time? I mean, I guess you could argue that, you know, does one of these guys end up in a situation where they're only playing 15 minutes per game, right, as opposed to being in the low to mid-20s? That could possibly happen to whoever carves out the, the lowest role among all three. But realistically, all are going to be a part of the rotation. If you want to count Jamari McDowell, he would have an uphill battle. But again, we'll get to him in the wings. So as far as the minutes projection for just the guards specifically, I'm going to give 34 minutes per game to Dewan Harris at the one. That's about what he averaged last year. Now, it's funny because we very seldom see a player average less minutes per game the next year than they did the year before. I went back and looked and, you know, it was, it was a very short list of uh, Bill Self KU players who ended up playing less in year two or, or not year two necessarily, uh, but their next year that they did in the year before. I think some of the examples, it was like Jamari trailer one year, Brady Morningstar one year. Um, and, and the rest of them are pretty much guys who, Maybe they went from playing like, I don't know, 32 minutes a game to 31. And it's like, yeah, that, that, that doesn't really count. Um, but there is a lot more point guard competition where you could say, well, Dewan Harris, like we want to keep him healthy. We want him to be this ultimate pest on the defensive end. So will he be more energized? Will he be better if we play him 30, 31 minutes per game and give him a few extra minutes of rest? And that allows for a few extra minutes for Arterio Morris, Nick Timberlake, and Marco Jackson. I can see the side to that. Then again, we know Bill Self goes with the guys he trusts. Uh, we saw those years where Devontae and Frank were getting 37, 38 minutes per game. I expect Dewan to at least be at where he was last year. So I'm just going to go 34 minutes there, all of those at the one. Uh, then I'll Marco Jackson. I'm going to give him the six backup minutes at the one. You could convince me Arterio Morris is the backup one. I'll just go with El Marco there. I, I like El Marco's vision. I think Arterio could be a better three level scorer, better three point shooter than El Marco, but I think El Marco might end up being the better passer. Um, so Marco will get the six minutes at the backup one, and then we'll give him 16 minutes at the two slash three. Again, he could be playing some minutes where it's Dewan, Artario, and El Marco, right? And, and technically in that lineup, he's the three. Um, and then some minutes at the two next to Dewan Harris. So that gives him 22 minutes per game in total. And uh, a little study we were doing on Rock Chalk Sports Talk, like guys who were top 22 recruits in Bill Self's time, uh, kind of the floor of minutes per game they're playing is like 18 and this you know the upper end of things ends up being closer to like 22 24 minutes per game so uh, i think that's about a good number there nick timberlake i'm gonna give 25 minutes i have him starting at the two uh getting some minutes at the three getting some minutes at the two i think with nick timberlake the the shooting so valuable then again if you know the shooting is ends up being 36 percent and the defense isn't there could El Marco and Arterio get more minutes? Of course. But if all goes well, you know, you saw Isaiah Moss playing a ton for KU at the end of, of his season. That's kind of the Nick Timberlake role, except I think there's even more potential there for Timberlake and being a more versatile player. Arterio Morris, I'm going to give 24 minutes to all of them at the backup, too. 
um, behind Nick Timberlake whenever he goes to three or when he's out of the game, right? So that gives you 34 for Dewan, 22 for El Marco, 25 for Timberlake, 24 for Morris. And when you're just checking off the positions, that leaves you with zero minutes to give out at the one and the two. So now both those positions are, are all the minutes are allotted. The four and the five minutes are untouched. Obviously, we haven't gotten there yet. And now there are 14 minutes left at the three for our next position, which we'll get into here is the wings. First, though, this episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose. That's right. $200 you can spend betting everything from money line to the over-under, who you think is going to hit the first home run, uh, future, who you think is going to win the World Series. You you really want to give up some juice, but you're really confident in it, bet Shohei Otani at like minus 1,500 to win MVP. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, an official partner of Major League Baseball. Okay, moving on to the wing position here. We we talked about the the, the point guard. So uh, guys that I'm considering, and this is going to be wing slash forward uh, who, who apply for this conversation. I guess technically Nick Timberlake, if we're going to play him at some three minutes, Kevin McCuller, obviously, KJ Adams, uh, he'll apply for the center one too, but we'll put him in here for his sake of, of playing the four. Uh, Jamari McDowell, Marcus Adams as well. So that gives you kind of five players who – uh, you could see at the three and the four position, right? And I guess, uh, like I said, if, if you're going to play that three-guard lineup with Marco, I guess you could consider him here. Uh, but who's going to start? Kevin McCuller will start. Now, K.J. Adams, I expect to start at the beginning of the year. Bill Self going to go with the guys he trusts. What happens if we get to mid-January? KU loses, you know, uh, three out of four games. And there's some talk about, ah, this isn't working. They don't have a space on offense, whatever. Could you see a lineup where Kevin McCuller switches to the four and now you move Nick Timberlake to the three, Arterio Morris or Marco Jackson starting at the two? Absolutely, you could. But to start the year, I'm going to go with KJ Adams as the starter. Either way, KJ is going to play a big role on this team and, and will make a big impact on the team. Um, that's just the one thing that remains to be seen. We just don't know how it's going to go. And that's not a negative. That's just you just don't know. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so Kevin McCuller, KJ Adams uh, to start there. Who else is going to play as part of that? Well, Nick Timberlake, technically, if we're talking about him as a three, uh, like I said. And then that leaves you with who is in a position battle. There's probably not enough minutes to go around for both Marcus Adams and Jamari McDowell to be a part of the rotation. And what I say when I mean be a part of the rotation, I'm not just saying, oh, you played today. You're a part of the rotation. No, if you, if you came in for two minutes, whether that was the end of the game or if you came in for three minutes just because someone got in foul trouble or something like or if you're coming in for five minutes, one game, and then you're not playing again for two weeks, and then you're coming in five minutes a game, like that's not part of the consistent rotation. Realistically, probably only one of those guys is going to get there. And we talked about this on, on a previous episode uh, a week ago that it could determine how KU plays or, or vice versa. How KU wants to play could determine who gets that spot. Marcus Adams, you could play him as a small ball four. Jamari McDowell, you could play him at the two and the three. It's going to impact other players' minutes with are you playing too big basketball? Are you not? Obviously, Parker Brown could be a part of the position battle, too, in terms of one of those three could play, and that can have an effect here. But specifically for just the wing players, who's going to work out in front of Marcus Adams versus Jamari McDowell? Adams, maybe the more gifted scorer, uh, has multiple ways of scoring really good three-point shooter. Jamari McDowell looks to be a pretty good set three-point shooter as well, though, and maybe more of a wing-type defender. So you you have the talent and the the scoring and the athleticism of Marcus Adams. You have the defense, the 3 and D opportunity for Jamari McDowell. Who's going to win out on that? Either way, there's not going to be a ton of minutes for that guy to go around, but it is an interesting battle. So as far as the minutes projection, Uh, Kevin McCuller, I'm giving 30 minutes to. Now, I I think there is a case to be made in the same way that I mentioned with Dewan Harris. What if you got Dewan down to 30, 32 minutes per game because you have the depth and you want to keep him healthy and you want to keep him energized on the defensive end of the court? Well, what if Kevin McCuller, a guy who has had injuries the past couple of years, what if you wanted to limit him to 27, 28 minutes per game, right? Um, I'm just going to go with 30. It's a nice, easy round number. As you noticed when we were talking about the minutes of the guard positions, all the minutes at the point guard, all the minutes at the, the two position were filled up. We had 14 minutes left over after the minutes we gave out 
to Dewan, El Marco, Artario, and Nick uh, to give out to the three. So we're going to start Kevin McCuller at the three. He's going to get 14 of his minutes at the three. The other 16 of his minutes are coming at the four, right? So at different points through the game, he's going to basically be the small ball four. KJ Adams, we're giving 24 minutes to. So he's going to get 14 minutes at the four. And then once we get to the center talk, that'll be his other minutes with 10 minutes per game, right? So that gets him to 24 minutes per game. Then you have 10 minutes left over at the four position, which I'm going to give to Marcus Adams here. Again, you could have Kevin play more four minutes and and maybe carve out a role for Jamari McDowell. I think it does make some sense, even positionally here. We're going to give Marcus Adams 10 minutes per game. Um, and who knows, maybe it ends up being a split. Maybe it's five and five to both, but typically we don't really see that. So that would use up the rest of the three minutes. That would use up the rest of the four minutes. Uh, let's finish up here with Locked on Jayhawks talking about the center position, how that could be divvied out with the minutes rotation. Finishing things up with Locked on Jayhawks with the center position. Uh, very obvious who's going to start, play a lot of minutes. That's Hunter Dickinson. And then you get to the next category, which is who's going to play. K.J. Adams will play where we gave him 10 minutes at, at the five. Who has an uphill battle? That would be Parker Brown. Now, in theory, if Parker Brown or, or if KU just wants to play K.J. on the wing, right, instead of Marcus Adams getting those 10 minutes as a backup four, maybe K.J. gets those 10 minutes. So now all his 24 minutes are at the four. And now Parker Brown's playing 10 minutes as a backup at the five. And he's the other guy's part of the rotation. Very plausible, obviously a possibility. Um, I guess technically you could put a position battle between Parker Brown and Zach Clements. The idea is to redshirt Zach Clements. I think that's the plan, and I expect that to happen. But I've said this many times. I'll say it again. If Zach Clements comes out during fall practice and he just looks like a new man and is having a breakout type season, it's like, man, he is our second best center right now. Then who knows? Maybe they change out the plan and, and maybe it changes something up. Um, but yeah, so that would be the guy with the uphill battle. It really is Parker Brown versus Marcus Adams versus Jamari McDowell, just not necessarily positionally against each other, but which of them profiles best into the role that you're like, we have to get this guy minutes, right? And, and then that's going to determine how you play. So as far as how the minutes work out there, um, we got Hunter Dickinson getting 30 minutes per game, which you can convince me that'll be 32, right? Uh, you could also convince me if Parker Brown and KJ Adams are, are that good and you want to get them minutes for sure. What if Dickinson goes down to 28, you keep him a little bit more rested. I know he's done a good job avoiding foul trouble, but you you add a little few extra minutes to help with that just a little bit more just in case because it is still a center. Um, and then the other 10 minutes, KJ Adams. And uh, so if you're watching on our YouTube page, we'll explain this if you're listening on our podcast side of things. I have a, uh, a breakdown of how this all works, basically. So subscribe to our YouTube page if you could. Um, but basically what that means, we have our starting five, Dewan Harris, Nicholas Timberlake, Kevin McCuller, KJ Adams, Hunter Dickinson. Then the rotation players, you have Artario Morris, Marco Jackson, and Marcus Adams. Uh, Parker Brown and Jamari McDowell in this situation are reserves. Again, wouldn't shock you if either of those scooped ahead of Marcus Adams or vice versa. And then you're red shirting Zach Clemens and having that extra practice body. And in total, you're getting 34 minutes per game for Dewan Harris, 25 for Nick Timberlake, 30 for Kevin McCuller, 24 for KJ Adams, 30 for Hunter Dickinson. And then off the bench, Artario Morris is getting 24. And Marco Jackson's getting 22. Marcus Adams is getting 10. Now, obviously, this is not the be-all, end-all, and things will change over the course of the practices during the offseason. Certain players will step up. Certain players might not fit into the system or, or be having as good of practices to earn that more opportunity. How much will you know, Nick Timberlake, will he be able to defend? How much will it matter? How much will they just need his three-point shooting? How good will Artario Morris and Omarco Jackson be, right? Like, these are all very flexible um, to where you could easily shave off, you know, whatever your pick is. Like, if, if you're a big Omarco Jackson guy and you want to shave off, you know, five minutes per game off Nicholas Timberlake and give those to Omarco Jackson, I, I think that's reasonable. If you want to say that, no, they're going to need the shooting even more than is already there at 25 minutes, and you want to shave off a couple minutes of Artario and a couple of Marco Jackson and get Timberlake up to 29, like, I think that's feasible too. That's going to happen with uh, how the KJ Adams moving to the more wing position affects it, right? What if what if he it's just clogging up the floor for you and you decide at the end that, you know, you're going to actually be given 12 minutes per game for KJ as a backup five. You're playing Dickinson 28. 
KJ is only getting eight minutes at the four and still play 20 a game. And now you have more minutes for Kevin McCuller, Nick, right? Like there are a lot here that you could shave off minutes one way or another, give it to somebody else, or you can pick your favorite of the role players with Marcus Adams or Parker Brown, Jamar McDowell, where it is enough flexibility, but I do feel good overall and that these are good, like at least roundabout numbers, close enough numbers. And uh, we'll have to revisit this and see how dumb I am because, you know, I make stupid predictions all the time. Don't we all? We're all human. Um, so and see how dumb this is looking back. But also we'll see if we uh, nailed anything looking forward. We'll do another one of these once we get closer to the season and maybe we have more intel on how those practices have gone. But that's just at least one man's take. Uh, let us know if you think somebody should be playing more, should be playing less on the uh, comments in our YouTube page. That's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. You can find me on Twitter at D Johnson Radio as long as you don't use your uh, Twitter rate and exceed past that. Uh, you can find us wherever you get any of your podcasts. You, can also you are find Locked us like- on Jayhawks, your daily podcast. With uh, Locked on Jayhawks.